record. So shall I let everyone in? Are you ready to start? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay, I'll let everyone in. Hi everyone. Um, you should be automatically muted as you as you join. Um, if you could leave your microphones off, that would be great. Um, just waiting for everyone to come through from the waiting room and then and then we'll make a start. Okay, I think I think that's everyone in Hilly, so we'll make a start if that's all right. Um, so hi everyone, thank you so much for, for being here with us this evening. Um, just as I said, uh, everyone's microphones, apart from myself and Hilly, are muted at the moment. If you could leave it like that um, during the talk, that would be great. Uh, and just a reminder that this event is being recorded and it's going to be shared um, online via Onkos platforms in the coming weeks. So if you prefer not to be visible, feel free to, to uh, turn your cameras off. Um, so I'm Lydia. I work for Onka as their gallery manager. Um, my pronouns are she or they. And um, I'm a white person with short brown curly hair. Today I'm wearing clear framed glasses, gold dangly earrings. Um, I've got a white t-shirt on and a pink kind of pinstripe shirt. And in the background is uh, several shelves with books. Um, and yeah, if you have any issues during this event, feel free to message me directly in the chat and I'll try and assist you. Um, just a kind of rough overview of the structure for the event this evening. I'm going to introduce Hilly shortly, and then Hilly will share her screen and um, share some slides with us and talk through her work. I might ask a few kind of leading questions at various points um, during that presentation, which will last around sort of 20, 25 minutes. Um, and then there'll be an opportunity for questions at the end. Um, so yeah, Hilly is, is one of the artists that's currently exhibiting with Onka at the moment. Her exhibition, Magifa, is available to view on Onka's website until the 14th of March. And I'll share a link in the chat um, for anyone that hasn't seen it yet or wants, wants the link to share amongst their networks. Uh, I met Hilly in 2012 when we were both taking part in a artist residency at LaSalle Arts University in Singapore. Um, for undergraduate and postgraduate students called Tropical Lab. Uh, there was 26 of us all together doing the residency and it was a, a very intensive two weeks of researching a particular theme. Each year the residency has a different theme. Um, the theme for our particular year was land and we made, all of us made new work in response to that theme and then there was a group exhibition um, at the end of that work. And Hilly and I have stayed in touch ever since, but I, re I remember um, being really struck by, by Hilly's work and, and how she'd already had a you know, very developed visual language of her own that was unlike anything I'd seen before. And I was struck by her ability to create deeply intimate and personal responses to complex political historical stories that were as intriguing as they were oblique. Um, Hilly's work seamlessly blends drawing, painting, sculpture and installation, influenced by ancient art such as Persian, Egyptian, Japanese. And Hilly looks at artifacts, arche archaeological sites, temples and holy places often within nature. She is also interested in children's paintings, more recently um, being inspired by artists such as Jane Alexander, Catherine Gross, Heidi Butcher, uh, Hilma F. Klimt, also Wael Schauke and Walid Rudd. Apologies if I'm pronouncing any of those artists' names incorrectly. Um, Hilly's work has been exhibited in Israel, London, Singapore, Korea, Slovenia, New York and Amsterdam. She recently had a solo exhibition at Bradwolf Projects in Amsterdam where she was artist in residence. And Hilly received the Rabino Rabinovich Foundation grant in 2015 and again in 2017 for solo exhibitions. From 2016 to 18, she received the Artist Teacher Scholarship for Teaching Art at the Centre Arab Jewish Youth at Risk in Jaffa. And in 2018, she exhibited at the Museum of Islamic Art and at Architecture House Jaffa, both supported with grants for new artwork. And at the 10th Fresh Paint Art Fair 
and at the Gamma International Invited Exhibition, Gonsai University in Seoul. And um, Hilly holds an MFA and a BFA from Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design in Jerusalem, where she received the Presser Award in 2007. She also studied at Slade School of Fine Arts in London and later in the Literature Department of Tel Aviv University in 2010. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for being here, Hilly, to, to share a little bit of insight into your work. Um, if you thank could... You for having me, hosting me. <laughs> and for um, all, uh, hosting my exhibition and willing to also uh, have me as a resident. Yeah, it's, it's been a real pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, if you could just give everybody a, a quick visual description of yourself, that would be great. Okay. Um, I'm... Uh, Okay, <laughs> I'm not used to it, but I'm a short hair, brown with um, burned edges, white skin, uh, wearing the red top, and uh, in the background, you can see my home studio. Um, is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. And just sorry, I probably should have clarified this at the beginning. We asked, we, like I gave a visual description of myself, and we asked speakers to do it just if there's anybody attending or anyone watching the recording later with um, yeah, low vision or vision impairment, just to make it a bit more accessible in that way. Um, so Hilly, I'm going to hand over to you now if you want to share your screen. Uh, yes, I will. I just want to say everything, everyone that connected that I'm really excited and thank you for coming. And um, in general, I'm going to talk not necessarily only about the Magifa exhibition, but a little bit, I'll give you a review of uh, of my work and of the actual project that I planned to do now because it's different. It was supposed to be an artist residency and an installation that was site specific to Brighton. Um, and, uh, and at the end, I will get to also Magifa. Uh, okay, so I'll share my screen and begin in a second. Okay, so it's okay, it's working? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'll begin. I'm, I want to talk about my works. Uh, a lot of times they're complex, but I want to talk about them from the point of view of the object and uh, how I perceive objects and what interests me about objects, and when I talk about objects, I mean also uh, also paintings and drawings and also artifacts and archaeological uh, findings. So this is, uh, and, and when I create this, these things, I always think about the space they will be uh, maybe um, seen in, and I create the installations I, I create are usually me trying to create an environment to my other objects and drawings. So this is how they become a space and uh, uh, I kind of try to make them uh, a world, a place for them. So this is a uh, quite an old work that I decided to begin with. It's uh, a house I built as a dollhouse uh, for these uh, objects I was creating in my studio that were replicas of um, of a sarcophagus pencil case I had as a child uh, from the uh, brought me, given to me as a present from uh, the British Museum shop. So I was creating these kind of um, replicas of this merchandise, uh, quite a lot of them, and uh, I built them a house. And then I decided also to create a whole space for them, a uh, place. And these are more. I created around 40. Each one of them had its own uh, specific details, uh, trying to take it back to this kind of uh, an archaeological finding, but still uh, being uh, referring to this, uh, this uh, memory I had. And this pencil case went with me through all my studios, and I have it until today. And it was also a personal thing. So this is the space. I built for these 40 uh, objects. I call this exhibition the British Museum, and it was important to me to have this space in space 
with the light and the object in the middle that, that kind of uh, create this atmosphere for them. Uh, this is another... Really, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I can't, I'm still seeing the first slide. Are you, are you going Really? To... Oh, no? Do you need okay. to put into the presentation, Dee? Because it's got one like second. the menu bit on the side. So one second. So maybe I need to show it like this. Yeah, try, try flicking through. Now, did you see? Yeah, can you, can you make it full screen? Um, so we don't see the menu. It was full screen for some reason. Let's try, okay. So now it's full screen. Tell me if you see it change. Do you see it change? No, I can still see the bit down the side, but maybe don't worry too much. As long as it's moving through the slides, then that's the main thing. Oh, so I don't understand, what do you don't see? Um, so I can see like down down the right hand side. It's um it's got I think like the menu option. I think when we looked at it before, it got rid of that. But I can't remember exactly how you did that. Everyone else also don't see the slide moving. I would yeah I would imagine that they're seeing what what I'm seeing. Oh sorry no the, you can I can see the slides moving now. Before I couldn't. Okay so now you're seeing them moving. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's fine to just carry on as you are. Before it wasn't it wasn't moving through the slides, but okay. So so these are the the objects I will, I was talking about that I was creating, um, and uh, this is another installation. It's, it was also a complex one, but I want to see from the view of the object. I one of the stages of the exhibition was me uh, doing the ceremony of trash the dress. Uh, for my wedding dress and I kind of took the, my wedding dress um, and uh, create, did the actions I do on the, in my studio and hung it in an altar uh, in, the, in, the exhibition, in the exhibition space, leaving it as a kind of memorabilia. Yes. Sorry. Um, what, what slide are you on? Because we can still see the two um, sarcophagus, like one on top of the other. Oh no, the, um, the wedding dress slide, no? No, it's, it's not moved through. What do you see? Uh, so, yeah, I think other people okay. think it's not moving for them either. No, it's like this. Uh, now do you see them change? No. Maybe if you, if you stop screen sharing and kind of reload it, maybe, maybe that'll help. Let's see. So apologies for this, everyone. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so strange. Maybe I'll open the file after I do the screen share. Okay. Mm. Sorry, I'm closing the file and opening it from the beginning. It will take me one second. It wouldn't be a Zoom meeting without a technical issue. <laughs> okay, and I'll do a screen share one second. It's so strange, it's not working because we checked it and it worked. Okay, so now. Okay, you see the first uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me if you see, if, does yeah. it move? Yeah, do you want to try? Keep, keep. Okay, so let's try and hope it's not gonna <laughs> get static. Okay, so until what slide did it uh, show before? Uh, so we only got to the second slide before. Oh, okay. So now I'm on the third. Do you see the... Yeah, <laughs> So this is the space that I was talking about of the British Museum exhibition. Um, and now I was beginning to talk about this exhibition, which was called The Moldy Matrimony, where I charged my wedding dress in this uh, ceremony, creating uh, this uh, object um, with history and story. And you can see it was uh, also uh, shown uh, it's working now. I'm kind of uh, conscious yeah, about it's that. It's working. It's working fine now. 
Okay, so uh, this was a project I did in Amsterdam where I hung, I invited people to charge small clouds with the hospital ex experience they had and uh, tied to the, um, to the main shrine. It was uh, based on the site-specific place being a hospital in its past. And uh, I kind of wanted to, and it was influenced by toys. And um, I didn't say that I'm talking about objects and I wanted to also see it from the point of view of me being influenced by toys and by archeology span and the combination of them, because that's what was interesting for me in Brighton and I'll get to that. So here people charge with uh, the small, cloud, uh, mobile looking uh, things with their hospital story that were a lot of time stuff. And uh, they kind of, it kind of became a whole cloud of collective memory about hospitals and uh, had all these kind of connotations to it, like sharing the memory or this experience and creating it, uh, made it maybe light together or all this uh, kind of, it was a very communicative work and, uh, also, uh, we're thinking about shrine altars and, uh, and charging the objects. This is another work from there, me exploring the history of the place. It's, this is the shape of the gallery and photos I found of it from uh, the past, being a hospital, so it was also part. And this is another work from there. And I wanted to, to show you the, my influences were, was uh, this, uh, this is a shrine in Japan, and I mean, my visual uh, references. This is also a picture, I just wanted to put it so you can see also where I take my, um, also a lot of images. Uh, okay, so um, uh, I got to the Sweetwater Canal and the toy donkey that you see here. Lydia, did you want to ask something or? Should I continue? Sure, so I, the, I, the, the, can't speak. Okay, now I see, now I see that um, slide. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, so you came to Brighton in, um, sorry, I should turn my, my video back on. Um, I'm just going to, Sorry about that. Um, technology. <laughs> yeah, so Hilly, you came to um, Brighton in 2017. And I, as I mentioned before, we'd met several years earlier, but had stayed in touch. And uh, you told me about the Sweetwater Canal project that you've been working on um, and how it linked to objects in the Brighton Museum and Brighton Toy Museum. So can you tell us um, about how that project started and specifically in relation to to those objects of the, the donkey toy and drawings and coffee cup that we can see on the screen now. Yes, yeah, so uh, these objects, this specific toy donkey led me to Brighton and the Toy Museum in, in Brighton. Uh, these specific objects are uh, from the Sweetwater Canal project that influenced me. They were, the story behind them is that uh, one of my professors um, saw my works some of my drawings and say they remind him of an Egyptian uh, artist who took uh, some drawings from his house when he was in the Yom Kippur War by the Sweetwater Canal. And I was really curious about it and wanted to explore them and I went to see and, and there were also these objects he took and I decided to create this installation inspired by these objects that were either plundered or salvaged by his uh, 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 words uh, taken and uh, relay them also to the merchandise uh, uh, that represent that are, is produced in the British Museum and in general I thought about the the big museums that were taking also uh, things and I kind of did this connection thinking also about this anonymous uh, uh, Egyptian artist and I wanted to do this kind of um, uh, installation that is uh, uh, referring to him, even though I don't know him. So I created him a, a working space and the whole space was 
the whole way that I work with the space is to exhibit these small things, which I call coveted objects for plunder, that are, uh, each of them were, this is, I put this uh, sketch to, to show you uh, how I think, and this is before the installation, my thoughts about the installation, and this is the installation. So I wanted to see, uh, to show you the way I work. I create a lot of this, uh, these uh, sketches. But anyway, these, the objects themselves that I created uh, were hybrid objects of scenes from the objects he took and from uh, re replicas from the British Museum um, uh, souvenir shop. Uh, I won't get too much into this exhibition because it was kind of complex and layered, but uh, it is related to what I was looking for in Anka because uh, one of the objects that we're taking was this toy donkey, this small toy donkey. And I was uh, after its origin, searching its origin. You can see here a work I did uh, influenced by this to toy donkey. And uh, this is the original one. Uh, the toy donkey was, you, you see the slides go, right, Lydia? Yes, yeah, they're moving perfectly. Uh, so the toy donkey, uh, I was interested in it because it was an object, uh, an artifact that arrived to Egypt, but its origin was uh, European. Probably a company called Farnell, an English comp toy company called Farnell. I was researching to, to check its origin and uh, and that's how I arrived to the toy and uh, model museum in Brighton. Um, Lydia, you will share the. This is a link to an essay I wrote in uh, as part of, of a near seminar, um, a seminar I did of global history of the Middle East. Yes. This was published uh, in JSLR, the Van Leer uh, Institute. Uh, yeah. So I just put that. Um, about that. Uh, did Did you put it in the chat? Yeah, it's in the chat, so people. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to read about that project, you can read uh, more there. Uh, so this toy donkey led me to this place, which is the Brighton Toy and Model Museum. And here I get to the reason we are here today, because this, this was a project I was working on, on before COVID. And uh, I was meeting Lydia and we were talking about it, and I was supposed to do this installation. This is part of the research. So one of my uh, tools I work with uh, when I go and exhibit abroad is uh, researching through Google Street View. So this is a photo from Google Street View. And it's, uh, it's an amazing tool. I love the visuals I get there. And when I did also the installation in Amsterdam studying before arriving there, I took a lot of images and, and uh, use them as my uh, reference and inspiration. So this is the Toy and Model Museum in Brighton, which is an amazing place. It's underneath the train station. You can just arrive there and go to it. It's a private place. If, uh, if uh, a person that had a big collection and decided to, to create this museum. This is from the inside. And what was for me, uh, I was looking for in this collection was the soft toys to, to, to find toys that resemble the, the toy donkey I was talking about. That, that uh, was in my previous exhibition. So these are more photos from the toy museum. And this is the soft uh, toys collections there that this is what was interesting for me. And these are pictures that I took for reference for things that uh, after that influenced me, but also uh, I thought that relate to the toy donkey. So these are more references. Uh, I was planning to take, uh, to create also a, a small installation in the Toy Museum and in Anka. Uh, another uh, picture and this is how I was researching and the origin of the toy donkey was from Europe and I found it interesting uh, the history of it coming from Europe to Egypt and then by uh, an Israeli so soldier taken from Egypt to Israel then being exhibited in Jerusalem in my exhibition. And then I was uh, back to the UK looking for its origin. So I was, this is something also that was interesting for me in the global history seminar. I was talking about thinking about how uh, trade and, and objects transfer and go around the world. 
So these are more things I saw there that I found super interesting. And this is again from the Google Street View. This is the entrance to the Brighton Pavilion, uh, which is my other stop in Brighton. Uh, I was searching there for their Egyptian collection uh, because I was uh, interested in, in also um, these objects, archaeological objects, and also in their connection to the toys. I will get to this connection soon. So this is the, the one of the galleries of the Egyptian collection in, uh, in uh, Brighton Pavilion, which is a beautiful castle, but their, their Egyptian collection is really small and not glamorous like in other big museums. Also in the way it's shown and also the object themselves. There's something really modest about this collection. And I liked it. It felt like not seeing the kings and queens, maybe uh, glamorous objects, but seeing the maybe everyday life. Uh, so I was looking and photographing there, and I found this, which was all their objects are uh, objects that are the um, the path for the dead. But I I found them relate to toys and have this connection, these objects charged with meaning. And I decided I want to connect these two um, these two institutions, the Brighton, the Toy Museum, and the Egyptian collection in the Brighton Pavilion, and create a new kind of hybrid space influenced by both of them, but in a contemporary art gallery such as Zonka. So that was my plan. Uh, oh, okay. Is it still transferring? Yes, yeah, I had the amulet to right now. So these are amulets also that I found interesting. I chose like the most, uh, the photos I like the most. I, I did a lot of rich research on the guy, the, the manager of the collection there is, was really informative and uh, lovely. Uh, another amulet I liked and another one. Uh, this, this is the main, thing that I found interesting there and uh, was beginning to be my main uh, interest to the exhibition. These are name tags of mummies, wooden name, they're from wood, from uh, about, uh, from the Roman period in Egypt. They are tags of mummies that on them they have tags and themselves are tagged. So I found them like, it was tagging tags that are tagged and they, uh, each tag represents a person that had a life and uh, and, and ha ha has on its details of this person, the age, the place it is from. So I found it really interesting, especially regarding our, um, our uh, thoughts about tagging today in the Instagram, Facebook. So, so I thought it would be interesting to deal with these objects. And this is a close-up of several of them and this is something that uh, information about for example this label was of Artemidura that was 35 years old when she died from the Roman period from Thebes uh, and that was supposed to be the name of my exhibition Artem and Artemidora and so then COVID came oh no this is again before COVID came uh, this is an example of one of the works it was meaning to show there, it's already me taking the and connecting between the toy museum to an amulet, the, the monkey is an object from the toy museum and the amulet is from the Egyptian collection and they are in space. And I was meaning to create uh, several of these. And these are space sketches of Onka. Uh, my imagination of how the installation would look, would look like, I was also dealing with uh, the way things are exhibited, showing, and I wanted to play with it and uh, have a new kind of way of uh, showing. I meant to have uh, shelves and to use Onka's uh, street view like a shop uh, as a vitrine, as a display case. Uh, so that's, you can see a little bit of Onka's space. And this is the last work I was doing, which I can share. It's already a gift. Uh, you can see it moving here. And this is the last work I was doing, which was um, then COVID arrived and, uh, and I left this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing a mess. 
uh, and uh, what happened is I, I left what I was doing then and, uh, and began working on Magifa because it was really hard to work on something that you don't know where it's, when it's going to be because I was already working on this exhibition and uh, looking for babysitters in Brighton to come with Aviv and, uh, and then uh, everything was cancelled. So uh, yes, Lydia, were you there? I am, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, it's really fascinating to yeah just hear more about your process and, and how you research and kind of collate material. Um, thank you for, for sharing all of that with, with us. Um, do you want to um, share the the website page so people can see the gifts as they're moving because they're not they're yeah. not moving on the slide. I know I'm having the problem with my I wanna screen share has stopped. One second. I can do it or do you want to do it? Oh I know I know um one second. Yeah if you can put uh Magifa and I'll keep talking because I am having yeah sure two seconds I will just get the link up. Um, I will share my screen. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so for anyone that hasn't um, seen it, um, this is the exhibition on Anka's website. Hilly, do you want to talk through this as I scroll? How do you want to do this? Yes, yes, you can begin scrolling um, slowly. I'll just say about the exhibition that it was um, creating during the first lockdown here, uh, or maybe also it was the first one worldwide. And it was really me, the everyday life was becoming really uh, introvertive, or I'm not sure I said the right word, but very basic to the everyday life, to cooking, being with your uh, with Aviv, my child, and uh, playing with his, with his toys. Um, and, uh, and also the art became more basic, more things I can do at home, not big sculptures or installations or paintings, but uh, drawings. And uh, I was just drawing from our, from toys and from uh, my imagination and, um, and Think and, and thinking uh, that I didn't think it would become a, a whole group of work, but uh, gradually it did. And uh, I was, they are actually, uh, I was having this feeling all the time that I want to draw plants. And uh, I couldn't understand why, but uh, I realized that around me also people are growing lots of gardens, and uh, I have a friend that did a uh, whole agriculture farm on her uh, rooftop and in balconies and our neighbors in their uh, uh, community garden and and I was thinking that there's some urge for people to go back to this basic thing like growing uh, and in my case it was more uh, in drawing and painting and then like I said in objects that I want to um, create a, in my installations a place for the objects or for the sculptures, drawings. Again, I had this feeling, but this time I did not have a physical place. So that's how the gifts were created. I was searching to create some kind of space for them. So I was thinking about the, the digital space, this digital sphere, but also inside of them, the minute I, I animate them even a little bit, they become a whole, uh, they have space like air in them so and i called it inserting charging them with a bit uh, and looking afterwards i understood that also this repeated gif uh, represented uh, the feeling of this time that every day looks it's like an ongoing present and every day looks like the other one uh, even though it's uh, there are also beautiful things in it but it was like very repetitive and sometimes also stuck like reality was stuck because I did not, everything was canceled, everything was suspense, uh, 
was found. Um, so this is how they became. And they became really relevant to the atmosphere that uh, I was living in and the toys of uh, Aviv were really uh, inside of them. The animals you see are drawings of to small toys. I have plastic animals he has or some of the structures are like the things I was building with him in the Duplo um, and a lot of music in the background uh, of Mexican ch children, Mexican songs. So this, this is how at the end, this is what, um, what we came. <laughs> so I think that's it. Maybe unless Lydia, do you have any more questions or maybe? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to the exhibition in the chat so everyone, everyone's got it for reference. But um, yeah, I guess maybe you, do you think you would have you would have made this work had it not been for for lockdown? Uh, I don't. I mean, uh, I guess that it did uh, kind of uh, gave me a a different path. I mean, it does have all the characteristics of what anyway interests me. Uh, I still have there an atmosphere of shrines or of kind of. Uh, um, small sculptures in them, but uh, I guess that uh, going back to the basic is also going back to painting and drawing in my house because we all, I also didn't go to the studio at the beginning. Um, and then making them gifts is completely the, the I guess, uh, uh, the zeitgeist, you know, the, the, the wind of time uh, because this is how I, I thought uh, I could create a place for them. And do you do you think that you'll continue making internet-based work, or do you see it as a one-off? Um, I think I will, for sure, because I, I did find it really interesting, and I find it just another tool. Like if I do the physical things, it's not. It won't be instead. I really believe in objects and in the. They, they, they don't have a replacement, the feeling of a true objects also when you create. Uh, uh, but, but I do think that uh, it is another uh, space that can be used, especially at these times. Great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm conscious of the time, so I think it would be a good um, opportunity to open it up for questions from other people. Um, Pers, can you tell me, sorry, this is a technical <laughs> question. Are you able to unmute yourself to ask a question? Yes, I am. So yeah, if people have questions, um, hopefully there's not too many of us in, in this meeting that we can kind of do this without it being... We had a, we had a question. Okay, great. Go ahead. Hi. Hello. You're just really fascinated by your use of scale, you know, the way that you play with scale, Hilly. I'm sorry if you had talked about it at length earlier. I didn't catch it. If you did, would you be up for talking a bit more about, about your use of scale? What do you mean scale? Like, you make tiny things huge and huge things tiny. Again, I didn't hear. How you make small things large and large things small. So the scale would be like the size. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's an interesting question because it's something, I have like this thing of, of thinking about, well, for me, thinking about the small objects, the details, but then because I think about the space, it becomes like a whole environment. And um, I'm trying to think, um, I'm trying to think if I have another, uh, it's kind, a lot of times the big, the, the larger things are, are built from a lot of small, like in the mobile, it became quite a huge, uh, I don't know if to call it sculpture, but it became uh, gradually uh, through the exhibition time uh, bigger because everyone uh, hung clouds, but it was still made of a lot of small uh, details. Um, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but uh, I, 
there's just something that is like you cannot change when you do something really small and have the details and there's something that when I think about artifacts or uh, the feeling uh, of an object that you can put in your hand um, uh, this is what makes me interested in creating the, the small things like you said the tiny things even if they uh, represent something bigger uh, so, something like the you know the old uh, Venus from Willendorf that you can just have in your hand so this is like how I think a lot of times about objects that I want them to have this kind of magical uh, feeling but then like I said maybe in the beginning maybe you did miss it that I want to create a house, uh, an environment for these small things, and then it becomes, it grows and becomes a whole uh, space. Uh, and this search for a space, it's like, I feel like I need to create a, a world for my things that is inside the real world, maybe. Um, did that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, um... Yeah, you've put much more articulately, Hilly, what I was sort of saying at the beginning, but that one of the things that is so interesting about your work is all of those, like that focus on the little detail, the kind of intimacy, the, the personal, but then it's kind of, it inhabits a much more larger kind of complex world that is referencing sort of things outside of it. And it's, yeah, that kind of delicate balance that you manage to, to strike when you're making work that's really interesting. Um, does anyone else have, have a question for Hilly? Um, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi Eli. Uh, first of all, that's super cool. Amazing. I'm very happy to see this now. Uh, my question is, I, maybe I missed the part when you say, what was your, what made you want to focus on the toys? How did you get attracted, especially to the toys history and all the, whatever you explained? Yeah, okay. So specifically, maybe you missed that. Uh, I was after the a specific toy that made me arrive to the toy Brighton Toy Museum, but in general, I find in toys the, the same magical thing as in souvenirs and or in archaeology. There's something about them that is also um, uh, I, I find a connection, and I'm really interested in the connection in this um, in this thing specifically. To the toy Brighton uh, Museum, I arrived because of this small donkey, donkey toy uh, that was uh, from a previous exhibition of mine that was found by... Uh, uh, by oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, this... Um, this is one of my flatmates in the studio, so I will uh, show you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but is it, is, did I answer or was I... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I missed it. Like I, under, I understood, I wanted to know, but um, amazing and um, amazing research. I really liked it. Thank you. Thanks. I had a question. Hey. Yes. Hi. Um, with the animated aspect of the gift part, did you, when you were doing the drawings, did you know what you were going to add after or did you did it come together at the same time or was it you did the drawing and then you thought actually it will are you talking them. about the in the beginning no i did the drawings and then i wanted to animate them but then when i developed it i did think uh, from the beginning did, did, do, do you mean is your question is about what is specifically animated in them or no no it's more that did i didn't know if you did the drawings first and then you thought what you'll animate or whether they can, you were thinking about the two things at the same time and you so at you some knew point when you were drawing yeah, at some right. point I was thinking, uh, um at some point i was thinking before but at the beginning there were like um uh, i don't know several that were just done as drawings and it just i felt like i have to do another thing it's like i said i have to create a space for them it just it was like an urge and if it's not physical, it will be in the digital way, I guess. But well, now it works really well. Think about that. What did you say? I really like the way it works together. That's why I was asking. I didn't know whether it sort of was more organic or no, that answers though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um. 
Anyone else have any have any questions for Hilly? Yes, uh, I have a question. Hilly, how, how does it feel to move from the physical world to the digital world? In, you know, in art, art is, is a, basically a more physical thing. Uh, it moves you when you look at the, at the picture or at the sculpture, uh, but when you see it on, on the screen, it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, disconnected or artificial. Uh, artificial. What is your feeling? How did you feel when you had to move to this media? Uh, actually, I was happy to research, to know this media, like to find a way. Uh, actually, I didn't have much choice. If I could, I would do the installation in the physical way and, uh, and, and have it in the real world, what I was meaning to do. But I think it's just something different. And I think that uh, the urge to create had to find a place. And the place it found in this kind of uh, days was in the digital world. And also a lot of people uh, do uh, see art or uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, it's all, uh, uh, gain art from the digital world. I mean, uh, maybe most of the art seen today is from in Instagram. I don't know, but I, I'm, I suspect it is. So in this case, they kind of uh, are just uh, in the feeling of what's going on. But but yeah, I believe in objects, like I said, and I, I prefer the real thing. But maybe it's not either this or this, it can be together. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else, maybe? So someone has, has posted a question in the chat, um, so I'm, I will read that out for, for that person, if that's okay. Um, so this is from uh, Angela. It says, first of all, congratulations, your work is wonderful. A curiosity, do you like to collect objects in particular? Does your interest in details reflect that? Um, yes, I do like to collect objects. But now, currently, because of my... Uh, my son that is two years old gives me an excuse to collect toys I always wanted and uh, I never would have got for myself. So now I have this excuse. So I get all these animal toys I was talking about. He doesn't really care about them. It was for me uh, to, to play with them. But yes, I have this thing. I try not to collect too much, but, um, but yes, definitely. I see a lot in the chat, maybe. Uh, so yeah, Angela just says thank you for your answer. <laughs> uh, so we still have a, a few more minutes left. Um, does anyone else have any questions or any comments or observations? Okay. <laughs> so um, I want to really thank the uh, person who did this. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Sorry. Um, just before you you end up, I just I'm not sure if it's a question. It's more sort of an observation in 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 relation to size and what Haley mentioned in terms of toys and and small children and so on. I think like it just refers to the question of scale that was raised before. So I, I just thought that it's interesting because once you sort of become a parent there is a sort of the external and the internal and the relation between kind of treating little people and little toys and looking at the big world. I think you sort of empathize with that sort of gaze as well. So it just suddenly made sense to me that the transition between like the, the dynamic between the big and the small is perhaps sort of related to this interest in toys and, and, um, and sort of perhaps you know, transitioning into a parent as well. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's and thank you. Thing. Thank you, Anna. Sure. I guess it's true what you said that uh, that he does have. I, I mean, I always had this thing with small and big, but it, with small and creating the space. But I think it's it's really nice observation. 
Great, thank you everyone. Really interesting questions and yeah, nice to kind of continue the conversation in this way. Um, I've just posted in the chat a couple of other links. One, um, just to a very short interview with, with Hilly that's on our website that just gives you a little bit more um, insight into Hilly's influences and like full bio and things like that. And also um, we're doing another event as part of, um, to accompany Hilly's exhibition on the 6th of March that I'd really encourage everyone to come along to. Um, myself and Hilly and um, two other artists, um, Andrea Knezovic and Shirelle um, Horovitz. Again, apologies for <laughs> mispronouncing uh, names. We're gonna be talking about um, kind of adapting our practices to some of the challenges that COVID presents more broadly and specifically kind of sharing um, projects that we've worked on in the last year. Um, so yeah, I've put a link to that event. So please do come along and share amongst your networks. Um, it should be really interesting uh, conversation as well. And um, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna share the recording from this event um, online in the coming weeks. Um, so yeah, please do share. And yeah, Hilly, thank you so much. It's It's been really, really great working. I mean, we've been kind of working with each other for quite a while now trying to make this happen. Um, and it's, yeah, it's great that we've finally been able to kind of put something out um, on our on Onka's website. So thank you. And thank you so much for, for sharing your practice with us this evening. Thank you for having me and thank you for everyone that came and uh, found interest. And, um, and yeah, and I was thanking you, Lydia, for having just uh, really every time I have an idea, you were so open and uh, really amazing working with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and yeah, um, giving up part of your evening to be here. Yeah. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening and hopefully we'll, we'll see you soon. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs>